let's not be stupid in this situation. You need to tell me where the gun is. I got all night, people. Tell me exactly what is going on here. Thank you for joining us for another Movie Lingo. I'm Ron. I'm Iris. All right, so today we're going to talk about the movie Detroit out in theaters right now. Uh, Detroit is actually a true story. It's based on um, some incidents that happened uh, during the summer 1967. Uh, you got riots in the streets, and at the same time, um, you also have the police department kind of not on the same page with everybody in the city. A lot of things going on. Uh, it's Detroit's second riot. Um, if you know anything about the history of riots in the U.S., um, Detroit has two of them on the list. And they're some of the biggest that's ever happened. So here it is. It's a summer, 97. And what happens is there's supposedly shots fired at a hotel uh, that is near one of the places in which the guards uh, for the U.S. military and Michigan State Police, they hear this. They go over to investigate. And what happens uh, takes a turn for the worse. Um, it's about 10 individuals that are pulled out of their rooms. Uh, they're basically played this death game where they have to answer the questions of the police officers. Um, the officers don't do anything by the book. They throw the book out the window and do their own type of justice, resulting in three uh, young men being killed, um, basically at gunpoint. Um, this is about 50 years past since this happened. Iris, how'd you feel about the movie? Um, hmm, that's a good question. And, and um, I do, hold on, that, I just want to say, spoiler alert, it's much like the Titanic. It's a true story. So if you don't want to listen to us break this down and tell you what's going to happen, which will change your, your vibe of the movie, I'm not going to lie. If you watch the movie not knowing it, then it does change something. But just go away, go watch the one minute review. Go for it. Okay, so in my opinion, like... Just the story and how the story was handled was very intense. I did enjoy that. I mean, I felt it made me feel the emotions I think were meant to be felt within the movie. Like, it made me cry. It made me upset. Um, it made me appreciate some of the things that I have in my life now. Um, but the actual timing of the movie, like the pace, was so fucking slow um like a, I like I don't know like it was it was like give me an example like what part do you feel that was slow um I'd have to say just getting to the point of what the movie is really supposed to be about okay. like other than um you know the riots and stuff like that, but the movie is not really based on everything that's going on in Detroit. It's basically just based on the murders at this hotel during the time of these riots. Okay. So, like, the whole build-up into that, and then the whole, the whole... The way the whole thing is played out while they're in the hotel, you know, I just felt like they were just... It moved along too slow. Okay. Um, like, if, I felt like it built it. I'm sorry. Okay. That it built an intensity and then, like, it dwindled and then built it again. And, and I felt the same <laughs> way because there's a part. It, the way the flow of this movie starts, when it first starts off, it starts off with an animation. Um, the animation is from a famous artist and it talks about um, Africans coming over from Africa and slave, and then it goes into people mm -hmm. living in Detroit which at the time was predominantly white people. Those people moved out, they left the jobs, and after the factories went away, it just... So you, you had a little documentary type feel in mm -hmm. a cartoon. Then after that, then you actually had a documentary with pictures and stills and videos and a bunch of other stuff. And then halfway through the movie is mm -hmm. where the hotel thing happens. So it changes into something else. So I do, I do agree with the fact that the pace was slow. Yeah. Um, in the movie... And the jumping... What do you mean, the jumping? Like, how you were mentioning, like, it starts out like a documentary, mm -hmm. they show you... Like, don't get me wrong, I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, I, I knew about that situation in Detroit, but I didn't know it fully in depth. Okay. 
So seeing the live images and the, the actual footage and stuff like that, I appreciated that. I liked that they incorporated that. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was going into something that was informative to a dramatic movie and then back into being something that was just information inform informative. Like, like if I was watching the History Channel... Then I was watching HBO a short time, and uh, then I was watching the History Channel. Okay, it did. <laughs> as far as how I felt about the movie, I liked the movie. Um, like I've told a few people, watch the movie, but yeah. you're only going to be able to watch it once in most cases. I don't see anybody running to buy this on DVD. Yeah. Um, I don't know mentally where you're at for that reason. Um, but I did like what the movie was doing. It made you feel some type of way. The, the, the actor... That I do agree with. The cast did a very good job of making you feel like you were in that hallway, mm -hmm. um, as grueling as that was. The director has done some things in the past. I think it was Zero Thirty Dark, something like that. She did yeah. that one. Um, and I think The Hurt Locker. So she's known for doing stuff that's kind of pulls at you and emotionally gets you. Yeah. There are some things I did not like about the movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's Detroit. You named it Detroit, and I felt like you didn't capture the whole essence of Detroit. Um, you didn't talk about the music. Again, Motown was really big. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they mentioned Detroit. it. They, they mentioned it. They, they dabbled with it a little bit. But... I feel like you got Easter eggs out of it. Like, I give you mm -hmm. an example. Um, they mentioned Ford Motors three or mm -hmm. four times in it. And Ford, it was really big back in the day. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of the driving forces of Detroit. And they mentioned it as small little Easter eggs and little conversations. Um, in this type of movie, for them to even mention it, it's also weird because if you look at Henry Ford's past and what he believes in, it doesn't really go with the flow of the movie. I mean, he mm -hmm. really wanted to work his workers, and some of the innovative stuff he's come up with was just to get more money. So you had that. You had, like I said, Motown wasn't a part of it. Motown should have been a part of it. You had um, the Supremes. You had Stevie Wonder. You had Marvin Gaye all singing about songs, about the riots, about what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and while the rest of the U.S. was like, man, this is so soulful and this music that you're getting, um, for Detroit, they were telling you the pain and what they were suffering, what they are going through. And you only got that in a little snippets. Like, there's a part where um, the girls are up there singing at the Fox. Mm -hmm. And as they're getting ready to perform or finish out their last song, they're getting ready to do a song called Jimmy Mac. And they're mm -hmm. good for songs like Heat Wave and... Numerous other songs, like their Hall of Fame. Yeah, so this is historic music that you're seeing and it's real events, but they changed certain things. Like, she was the one, the lead singer. She was supposed to tell everybody, no, we're sorry, you have to leave. Yeah. They had the other guy say it. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to perform the song Jimmy Mac, but they don't perform it. And the Easter Ed nod to it is, in the hotel, the song is playing. That's their way of saying that that's what the song... It would just... The music should have had a bigger vibe to it. If you listen to the soundtrack, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the facts versus it, they the director kind of picked what they wanted, what they didn't want. For instance, um, there was a book that came out um, by an author who actually went to the events because he believed, honestly, the reason why uh, the men died, the three men, was because they were just young black people that happened to have two white girls inside the room that they possibly were having sex with. That was the only reason that they died. But the black guy, I forgot the guy's name. I think he's in Europe or UK, wherever. But he he's in the Star Wars. He plays the security guard. Oh, Finn. B B we'll call him it's, Finn. It's Finn in Star Wars, you we'll, guys. <laughs> we'll go that route. In the documentation, he actually participates in the beating of the people in there. A lot of people don't know that. In the movie, they don't do that. In the movie, he's just low-key. He's quiet. Mm -hmm. But he goes on trial, and it takes him for him to be acquitted. Um... The girls who actually were in there, the girls actually told on him as if he was the person who did it. When they didn't have enough information, then the officers got in trouble. Mm -hmm. The movie doesn't... The Emmett Till situation where he was beaten so bad, an open casket, that was gruesome to see that. Mm -hmm. And that's what they said started the civil rights movement. These kids were beaten so bad. At one point, the, the gun breaks. The rifle breaks. Um... They don't show this in the movie. The movie isn't as graphic. Oh, yeah. So it's not I mean, it was bad enough the way it was. So it to, was. To, but, to bring it to that that depth, I think it would have been But then, to, to my next thing, uh -huh. then who was this movie for? Like, we've talked about this before when we've had other sit-downs. What was this movie for? Because I left the theater saying, okay, I already knew the story. Yeah. Some of the details were kind of changed, but 
exactly what was this story supposed to do. It that, didn't. It didn't tell me any access to fix anything. Yeah, that that was that's actually a really good question because it doesn't. I, I feel like that's why I feel like it was just so jumpy, like with how the storyline was. I, Even if it was jumpy, you have certain details that were just the truth of it. You had majority of the officers. I don't think I saw any other officers that were African American. Um, Detroit has been at the, the front center of being, you know, police officers. I don't know what the exact termination is. They were the first units to use radios. They were one of the first few units to use police officer patrol cars. And they integrated, I think it was 1861, the first African-American. I think 1998 was the first African-American chief. They integrated their department. In this movie, there are no African-American police officers from what I saw. Um... The first guy, they even changed, and it's weird, they changed the name for the three white officers in the movie. They didn't change the name for the African-American cast. They were the exact same legal name. I don't understand the sense of picking to change the role. Even at the end where they show the true pictures. Oh, okay, okay. Our producer's telling us no consent to say the actual name. That makes sense. Yeah, oh, I guess. That does, they, wanna, they, they even blurred out the pictures. They even blurred out the even pictures. More. That does make sense. But... Hmm. Nevertheless, it just I felt like there are certain details that weren't put in. At one point, the lead officer he shoots one of the guys running back. Um, it's the guy from uh, Everyone Hates Chris. Yeah, everybody loves Chris. Something like that. Yeah, everybody shoots, hates Chris. Shoots him. That's a true story. That same officer shoots him. Mm-hmm. He dies, and he's supposed to go for the trial for the the murder thing. They acquit him on that murder of that guy dying. Um, the kid is twenty four as an officer. They used to hire officers as young as fourteen in Detroit at the time. Um, and some of them were two years in before the riot started. So I just felt like the movie Detroit should have showed more. Like the part where they're throwing rocks at the firefighters, there's 213 firefighters that were injured, 100 and something police officers, 43 African Americans that were killed. I'm just saying, with all that information I'm telling you, mm-hmm. do you think the movie left some stuff out? That's, uh, well, I'll put it to you this way, you guys. I really didn't... I didn't like the movie. I mean, not because I didn't like the storyline or Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was intense. I just felt like it wasn't pieced together well. And I do felt like, even with me not being as knowledgeable as you are with the story in, you know, in actuality, um, I do feel like it, it missed stuff. Like, okay, like the whole point of... Finn, because we're going to keep it as Finn. Okay, he's his job was to watch a store as security, which is perfectly fine. But they don't really go into depth like, what made you go to that house with the officers and the military, but you're a fucking security guard for a convenience store? That didn't make sense to me. He, he just said, he, he just like... Lock all the doors to the other gentleman that he was working with. We're going to find out who the sniper is. Dude, you're not a cop. You're not a part of the National Guard. So why are you going over there to find out what's going on? To be honest, I think he was just being nosy. Because if you're not going over there to help, because he didn't really do much helping. He didn't except do much of anything His character stand. literally just stared there and watched. But that's not actually what happened. And even in the the documentation, you have parts where the mil- you have the military there. You also had uh, Michigan State Police, mm-hmm. and they end up saying something along the lines of, "We're gonna leave. We see this is shady. We don't know the we don't want a civil rights issue." Situa- so we're yeah, gonna they leave. didn't want to be involved because they saw that the police officers, these young kids, are doing stupid shit. And knowing you're a vet, and you're M- Michigan State Police. So why don't you tell them you have authority over them? They could have stopped that whole situation. Yeah, but that's not getting... what happened. Actually, yeah, no, no, I know that. Actually, but I mean... everyone that you saw participated. Mm-hmm. There's documentation from witnesses that the military or the reserves, whoever was there, was participating in the beatings and everything. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with the, the police department from Michigan State. Same thing happened. They just, for whatever reason the story, they singled it out to these three officers. Yeah. Um, they tried to make it as if the officers are innocent. As if they were like, one officer was super racially charged. Even Again, even the scene where they're going to court and they find out that the verdict is not guilty. 
Um, the the court the trial was moved to Flint, Michigan, which had water problems later on in today's time. But um, every police officer stood up and cheered and shook the hands of the officers. It's like I didn't understand what the 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 motive was, making it seem that all cops are bad. Yeah. I believe police officers have it tough already. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some bad ones. Yes, but thank there you. are some there, good ones. I don't mean thank you like there are some bad ones. I mean there's in any there's, job. I just want to clear that up. Yeah, in, in any, any job, job, there's always going to be good people. There's, there's good always going to be bad people. Cops serve with their lives. But of course, you know, people like to focus on more of the bad guys instead of you know the good that's also done. That you know they do. They do get it really bad, though. Okay, then like what, police officers. There was parts in the movie where yeah. you even had blacks not liking black people. They were sitting there talking about Uncle Tom saying, oh, oh you're yeah. a pig. The opening scene at the, the, the infamous nightclub, um, that's what they say started the riot, where basically they were having a party for a war guy who came home, military, yeah, thank you for serving for us, and the cops shut that down. There was a guy who basically was a narc. He was a police officer or a, an informant for the police officers. He's black. And basically what they're showing, they didn't have to show that. That didn't change the storyline. Yeah. All they're that telling you is there was no was unity. About. It just, it felt like, I don't understand what the message was. You were saying that yeah. all cops don't like black people. Yeah. You, were, you, were, you only had one good cop who helped out one guy to help him get to where he needed to go. That was it. It was only for the drive of the story. Mm -hmm. There was no other help that had. So it just, I don't like I said before my previous question. I don't understand. And then what I feel is. like it also criminalized, you know, black people during that time as a whole, you know, because um, I know the riots were like me being an outsider of the situation and not mm -hmm. knowing the story in depth. When I watched it, all I saw was like people destroying their homes, destroying each other. Well, they mentioned that they black you have on a... black hate. You know, it's it's like. That, that that also confused me because I'm like, okay, were these riots against the government and white people or was it riots against each other? Like black people hating on other black context. people or... You could have gave us the riots from 43, which was really bad as well as one of the top riots as well. They had a riot in 1943 um, and they mentioned it briefly by saying, is it as bad as 43? Um, I think if you would have showed us that and showed us what Detroit was going through, we could have mm -hmm. understood it more. Yeah. And again, we just don't because you don't give us enough to feel what happened. And like I said before, it just, I don't know exactly what they're doing. You have 12 Year Slave. Mm -hmm. You have Roots. There's mm -hmm. other movies where you had other a screenwriter, art or director, if not both, African American, telling you the views of something historical. Mm -hmm. This one were two white people, okay? Um, like I said, it was watchable. It was brilliant. I enjoyed the movie. Go watch it. I just don't understand exactly how the vibe would have been different had we would have had, I don't know, someone else's lens looking through the movie. Yeah, that I'm telling you, like, I, I don't want to say the movie was bad, but it just, I just felt like it, it I'm, like I said before, it was like all over the place. I didn't know who the focus, you know, who's the focus group of this movie supposed to be? What message are you trying to bring to us? I just, I don't know. I don't think they put it together well. Okay, um, so, last question. Do you think they'll make a sequel? I hope not. Okay, I was joking. You can't make a sequel on it. I was, I was just messing with you. My real question was, with the movie Detroit, right? Uh -huh. Maybe just me. How would it have been if you would have taken what happened? They could do a prequel. They mentioned the 1943. Uh, you go away. What I'm, I'm just thinking, of, what if you took what Detroit did, right? Uh -huh. And you put it in today's time. The exact same actors, exact same script, mm -hmm. the locations, exact same thing. The only difference is you take where we're at right now. Do you think, I feel like if you would have done it that way and saying, you know, I don't know how you spin it. I don't write and whatever. But if you would have taken today's time and watched and said, wow, that's crazy. And then at the end it says, no, if you've never heard that this, this is a hundred percent a true story. The exact same thing you're watching in today's time with the people that you can connect to with cell phones, all this happened exactly the same way. It's a true story. I felt like that would have connected with more people than you watching another story that could have been on the History Channel. I don't know, because I, I've seen other, like, documentaries or informative movies that talk about things from the past where I was still able to connect with it because of how well it was put together. Yeah. 
So your thing is you're going to keep going with the flow of it. Okay, it makes yeah. sense. All right, so I then, mean, for me, it's not whether like, oh, it. they couldn't, they didn't put it within, you know, our millennium, so I couldn't connect with it. No. I just felt like the movie was all over the place. What message are you trying to give me? And, you know, how how could you jump from one thing to the next? And to be honest with you, the way the movie was, I don't think they should have named it Detroit. I, that's why. It, right? mm. Murders at Mo, Motel, whatever the fuck that place was. You could have called it that, the hotel. All yeah. right, so what would you rate this? Uh, I'm going to give it a, a five. Shit. A five? Yeah. I know the movie is all over the place because there was even a scene towards the end of the movie, and we'll get we'll get the the right number added up. But I know there was a a scene at the end of the movie where mm-hmm. the guy who was going to be the singer on I can't remember the name, but um, what was the group? The I started with a D, I think. I can't remember, but they're the still drastics, touring. The dramatics. Dramatics, yes, they're still touring. Um, like he chose not to be in the group. He went to gospel singing, yeah. and it changes once again at the end of the movie. It becomes him finding himself and. Being a gospel singer and being like poor for a while, like I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, like that just went in a totally different direction in the end. That's why I'm sorry. It was, it was. Yeah. So, so you're giving opinion. it a five. That's yeah. rough. I liked. There's a lot of stuff in it that was genuine. The setup of the hotel was 100 percent legit. Like they, the way the bodies fell and everything. If you go back, if you have the the stomach for it, and look at the the footage, the yeah. bodies were in the exact same position. That's why but I gave it a five. Every I design spot of it was very. The knife being the on the floor footage. next to the body, everything was as accurate as it could be. Um, but with that being said, I just found in that statement I said the inaccuracy of, like the hotel. They made it seem like it was some cool, jazzy place to be at. That was a really bad hotel. Prostitutes were there. The rooms cost six dollars a night, and they were drug dealers, murderers. That that was well, a he paid really $11. bad. Yeah, and that, again, inaccurate. But they were. That's a really bad motel. You're not stopping your family at that motel. So it made sense. I'm not saying that the cops are fine, but that was a part of the element that the cops were using for saying that why these kids were there. They were 19 year old kids, 16, 17, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like. Your five, I'm gonna give it an eight. Mm. I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm, I'm not I, again, like I said before. Yes, the story tries to do its own thing. There's things that are not true that I don't understand exactly what goes in a movie. So I'm gonna give benefit for the doubt. But I wish if you called it, if you called it something like Detroit, you should have got all of Detroit. Yeah. You should have showed us what the city looked like. You should have told us the political part of it because there's a lot of people in the politics that crashed um detroit romney's I know, you gave dad it an was eight, but you you sound I more negative it, than me so I'm, it's like i'm negative at the fact of you called it detroit you didn't give me everything detroit and i feel like so then the movie doesn't really deserve I, maybe i'm giving a sympathy maybe think i'm giving sympathy over the fact of what yes, happened that, that that's a pity a pity number he's giving uh, out you guys it, it could be so the average for it was six wait 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 oh, i hate to do this oh what Watch I gotta change, change it now. I gotta change it now. What do you? Because do? you have a point there. Like I can't give it a. It, it's about the movie, not the history of it. Exactly. Oh shit. That's what I'm basing all my stuff off of. That never happens. Movie I never change itself. it. You're seeing something that never happened. I'm gonna give it a five. There's no calculator needed. We don't need Mike to go and figure this out. I'm gonna give it a five. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give it a mother loving five, and I'm gonna feel perfectly fine about it. Okay, so we're going to give it a five. We're going to give... Okay, so overall movie lingual rating for the movie Detroit, five. I got five on it. Yeah, so with that being said, thank you for joining us for another movie lingo. I'm Ron. I'm Iris. Till next time. Not doing that. Melvin, you want to go home? Yeah. What happened at the motel?